What's going on, Tar Heel Nation? It is your favorite North Carolinian, Russ the Tar Heel. And in this huddle, we're going to talk about the number 20 North Carolina Tar Heels 77 to 52 victory over the UC Riverside Highlanders in North Carolina's last opportunity or tune-up game before the battle for Atlantis. And I'm going to start off by saying this. It was not always pretty. I think everybody that watched the game, especially as the game wore on, it was not the most beautiful basketball to watch, if you will. But the Tar Heels started off pretty hot. At one point, they took a 30-9 to lead. And I really thought at that moment that they were going to blow the lid off of the game. And, hey, credit to UC Riverside, man. They just never let North Carolina get past like 32, 32-point 32 lead. They just kept battling back and battling back. So North Carolina was up 30-9. to They ended up only taking an 11-point lead into halftime, 37-26, which was crazy because, like I said, I thought that they were going to blow the doors off, but UC Riverside just hung around. Then North Carolina kind of started real hot. I think they went on a 17-0 run to start the half in the second half. And UC Riverside did not score. Listen to this. They did not score for the first nine and a half minutes of the half. They hadn't scored. And then they scored 24 points in the last 10 minutes. So Carolina did not do a real good job of closing out this game. 77-52. to 52. And you got to think. With 10 minutes left in the second half, UC Riverside had, what, 28 points? So they didn't close out very well. Now, <clears throat> let's get into the stats real quick. Team stats, UC Riverside, they shot 30.6% from the field. North Carolina shot 45.9% from the field. Three-point percentage, which is kind of what kept UC Riverside around. They shot 30% from the field. North Carolina shot 28 Point six percent from the field just really could never establish the the themselves with a long ball which is kind of disappointing because you know in the second half what UC Riverside was attempting to do was they started double teaming Armando on the on the blocks and um you know he went into halftime with 14 points and I guess Mike McPio you know being obviously a decent coach he says hey we're gonna take Armando away, and we're going to make these guys shoot. And um, you could see that in this game, at least, North Carolina kind of struggled in that category. Um, you know, yes, they shot 46% from the field, but 28.6% from three, uh, that's not going to cut it. They have got to shoot the ball better from beyond the arc, or teams are going to pack it down. Now, we do have some ball handlers that can, you know, they can uh, – they can get in the lane, you know, so we can create in other ways by than just, uh, you know, feeding the ball down low to Armando Baycott. I'm not saying that that's our only offense, but we do have to work inside out. And when teams can see that we can shoot the ball, they're going to be uh, less apprehensive to double him down on the blocks knowing that we can shoot. So I thought that this was a good opportunity for them to put on tape that they could shoot, and it may have actually made teams say, you know what, we're going to sag. Until you can prove that you can consistently knock down the three ball, we're going to sag and we're going to take away your inside game and we're going to make you beat us from beyond the arc or at least take 16, 17, 18 footers. So I thought it was a missed opportunity. Um, just really wasn't happy with the way that the heels shot the three, obviously shooting under 30%. And some of those looks were really, really clean looks. Now, another interesting fact is, UC Riverside came in, and they out-rebounded the Tar Heels. Only by one, only by one, Carolina actually out-rebounded them in the second half. But for the game, UC Riverside took a 38-37 rebound advantage. And they got a lot of trash off the board. Um, just a lot of stuff that didn't barely touch the rim. Just some weird bounces off of the rim. And, you know, I felt like Carolina could have done a better job of fighting for the ball 
Um, we can't be out rebounded by UC Riverside. You know, I just I don't think that's a good look, and uh, it's something that we need to clean up. North Carolina uh, won the turnover battle, seventeen to nine, so that was good. Um, at one point, they only had one turnover. They got real sloppy in the end of the game. So once again, North Carolina wins by twenty five points, and uh, they covered. Line was twenty three and a half, and North Carolina by won by twenty five. So that's their first time covering all year. Let's look at a box score real quick. So for the heels, Harrison Ingram, 26 minutes, four for 11, one for four for three, had 10 points. So he's in double figures. That's good to see. Armando Baycott, 21 and seven. He went seven for 11 from the field, six for eight, four from the free throw line. RJ Davis, he struggled shooting the ball a little bit today. He only had eight points, Three for 11 from the field, one for seven from three, one for one from the free throw line, and he had three boards and four assists himself. And then Cormac Ryan also struggled, and he missed a couple of really open looks too. He went 0 for 4 from three, one for six from the field, and only scored two points. And I think if Carolina's going to be successful this year, they're going to need more from him. Now look, bro, Jalen Washington and Seth Trimble flash in this game. I mean, you got to give them a shout out. They both had 11 points and minimal amount of playing time. Jalen Washington had 12 minutes. Seth Trimble played 15 minutes. And Seth went five for seven. And I mean, he set the dome on fire when off of a steal, he gets a breakaway pass, dude. And I mean, he just brings it from behind his head and just yams on somebody, son. And then the great thing was to see him turn to the crowd and flex. I loved it. I loved the emotion. I loved the passion. And then you see Jalen Washington stepping outside and just smooth as a baby's bottom, knocking down stinking threes. His stroke looked really good tonight, and that really bodes well for the heels. If he can continue to shoot that mid-range you know, even the three ball, the way that he did tonight, man, he looked good. And um, I think that he kind of maybe earned a, a couple more minutes in the next couple of games, especially as the battle for Atlantis is a three game tournament in the sense that they're going to play three consecutive days. They're going to need Jalen Washington and Seth Tremble to get some extended minutes so as to save the heels legs in the long run. So I'm really excited about Jalen Washington and what Seth Trimble put on the floor on tape today, man. Good ball game for them both. Elliot Cadeau had 22 minutes. He went three for four from the floor, two for three from the free throw line. He had two assists, but he had four turnovers. So one assist to two turnover ratio, that's not very good. So definitely something that my man Elliot Cadeau has got to clean up. One assist to every two turnovers. That's, uh, that's not going to cut it you know, as far as the point guard is concerned. But he did have a couple of flashes, had some couple of good moves to the bucket. He's still finding his way, still finding his way. A couple of these guys, they're still trying to establish their role on the team. So like I said, it was not a pretty game. It's one of those games where I thought maybe we could score 100. We sh we're we 23 points short. But the good news is, is that even though UC Riverside does not have a very good offense, the Heels played some pretty stingy defense for at least 30 minutes. For at least 30 minutes. So they battled, and that was good. If your offense isn't working, you got to turn it up on the, under the other end of the floor. And I thought that the Heels did a, a fairly good job of that. So, once again, North Carolina, the number 20 team of the nation, beats UC Riverside 77-52 to in their last game before the Battle for Atlantis, which starts November 22nd against Northern Iowa. So, if you haven't already, guys, please like, share, subscribe to the content, and make sure you hit that notification bell that'll notify you every time that we make a video about our North Carolina Tar Heels. Hey, the Gridiron Hills play Clemson tomorrow, 315. Make sure that you tune in for the live stream for that. And then obviously, we will be here for the Northern Iowa game, Battle for Atlantis. It should 
be a stinking blast. Hey, you can't ask for much more than undefeated, baby. 3-0. and And has the competition been stiff? No. But you know what? It was good to see the heels finally cover. They won by 25. And you know what? I got to put another W on the schedule. And as long as I can start stacking Ws on there, baby, I'm sitting, sitting pretty. Exciting to see this team continue to grow. And uh, we'll see what they can do in the battle for Atlantis, baby. So like I said, like, share, subscribe to the content. Comment down in the comment section what you saw from this game, what you want to see in the battle for Atlantis. Make sure that you tune in to the live stream, Clemson and North Carolina tomorrow. And if you haven't already, consider becoming a member of the Huddle Hooligans. It's only $4.99 a month, and you get all the perks, man. It's listed in the thing. We got five in the family right now. So once again, baby, it wasn't always pretty. But as long as I can continue to stack Ws on that schedule, hey, you're not going to hear much complaining out of me. Got to work on the three-point shooting. Got to work on the closeouts, defending the three ball. And we have got to start knocking down some of the bunnies, man. Just missing way too many bunnies. But once again, Jalen flashed. Seth flashed. Armando was Armando Baycott. Hey, got the W, baby. So I love you, Tar Heel Nation. And we will catch you on the next one, baby.